Hi guys, decluttering creates physical space, clears up mental space, and generates fresh energy, making a space and the person occupying it feel fresh and nice and energized in a great way. Decluttering lets you release some stagnant or negative energy internally as well as externally, and it could be hugely beneficial when you have too much stuff in your space. Yet, as a professional organizer, I see something very common in homes that most people overlook. It's the small things. Today, I'm going to talk about the importance of decluttering small things and the big difference that it could make. Hi, my name is Mika and I'm a writer and I also own a professional organizing business. I'm currently writing a book series for the home and I'm currently writing the decluttering book. As I write, I share some of what I'm writing about on this YouTube channel. And this week I wrote about the importance of decluttering small things. So the irony is that small things are often easier to declutter, but we gloss over it because of clutter blindness, or we think it might not make much of a difference because it's small. Then we think a room is too cluttered or doesn't feel quite right, but we can't put our finger on why. If you've seen my other videos, whether the topic is about decluttering or productivity, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of Kaizen. Kaizen is a Japanese management concept, but it's so important and it applies to all aspects of life, but it's basically that little bits add up and it's about improving marginally. So I'll make an entirely different video about the Kaizen method, but basically it's about little bits at a time add up to have a big impact. And so when we're decluttering, sometimes I'll be with a client in their home. Actually, this is kind of often that this happens, but the client can't quite put a finger on what to start with or what is so cluttered. So then we'll start with say a drawer or a section of a room. And then a little bit into it, the client will say, "Ooh, you know, we're dealing with a bunch of small stuff here. Like, could we go to the bigger items? Because the small items might not make that much of a difference and I wanna maximize my time with you. But here's the thing, small things matter so much and they add up precisely for the reason that we overlook them and then they could add up and have a big weight on us. Little things add up so fast. So especially when I'm working with the client, I tend to stress the importance of decluttering things both big and small because once I leave, they're gonna see the big things, but I think the small things have just as much of an importance the funny thing about decluttering small things is you don't really notice, right? Say you declutter one receipt, you're not going to really notice an impact. Then you do two receipts, then we, you do three receipts, then you do a certain amount and all of a sudden it clicks and there's this massive impact on a space. So it's really important when you're decluttering to focus on small things as well as big things. And if you clear a bunch of small things out, then all of a sudden it's going to click and you're going to see the difference and it's going to make a huge impact. The thing is training yourself to see the small things because we humans have a tendency to overlook the little things. And that's why that game that the minimalists came up with, that 30 day minimalism game, I actually made a video on it. So I'll link it at the end if you haven't seen it, but it's a great game because it focuses on big and small. So the game is basically a 30 day game and then on day one, you get rid of one item. Day two, you get rid of two items. Day three, you get rid of three items and so forth all the way up until the 30th day. And then at the end of the game, you'll have gotten rid of 465 items. And what I especially love about that game is that it could be big or small. It could be a paper clip or a receipt or a car that you're decluttering. You just have to let go of a select amount of items within the course of 30 days. I think then when people struggle with letting go of bigger things, they'll start to think to their smaller items. And then it seems so inconsequential, like uh, extra kitchen utensils or papers or pens or expired toiletries or old phone cases. But those things, they add up and they take up so much space. And so I think at the end of the game, that's where the magic of the game is, is that big and small goes out and adds up to make a huge impact. I feel like when we're talking about decluttering small things, a great metaphor for the importance of the small things is akin to like productivity. In terms of productivity, we prioritize and we take care of what's important, which is excellent. But sometimes then we tend to gloss over the unimportant seeming things, the little things. And then those little things start to weigh on us and become a drain on our productivity. 
those things become a little annoyance that takes on a lot of weight and then becomes a big thing. So when we talk about productivity, they say to take aside a day a week or a day a month to take care of all the little things. Otherwise they loop around in your mind and then become big drains. So it's like, imagine a drain pipe and then each little thing is a hole. And then eventually all those little holes in the drain pipe really slow down the efficiency of the water going through. In fact, there's something called the two minute rule in terms of productivity. And it's a term coined by David Allen, who's the author of Getting Things Done. And the two minute rule basically means if something takes two minutes or less to do, just to do it right away on the spot, take care of it right then and there so that things don't end up piling up. And this really helps with procrastination. And in many cases, in art for example, it's the attention to detail that matters. I recently published a children's book and I was told at the end when all the illustrations were done and we were placing the font, just how important product placement is. Product placement meaning the font. The font being just a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right made an incredible difference. So in this analogy, you wouldn't think it would make such a difference. The human mind doesn't think, wow, just the touch to the left is gonna just totally give a different feel to the whole page, but it does. And the same with decluttering. Taking out one small thing or two small things out of a cabinet can all of a sudden make things easier to reach and move around and to store. So I have a few real life examples from clients whom I've had recently. One of my clients had a kitchen drawer that was broken. And I think clutter is not only stuff that you no longer need, love, or use, but it's also stuff left undone. So that kitchen drawer would take about 10 to 20 minutes to fix, but they left it for weeks because they were really busy. So they didn't have a dishwasher, but they had a drying rack and would hand wash their dishes. So this drawer that was broken happened to be a very widely used one. They stored their Tupperware in there, their aluminum foil and other things. So because they couldn't quite open the drawer, the, the kitchen counter was basically come, becoming really full and it was causing like this chain effect. So the dish rack had all this Tupperware, but since they couldn't open their drawer to put the Tupperware in there, they were letting it pile up on the counter and then there wasn't room to put the dishes and then they couldn't hand wash the dishes. So now the sink was piling up and their kitchen was just in disarray when I arrived. So that's when I said, how long will it take to fix your drawer? And when she said 10 to 20 minutes, I was like, let's just do it right now. And then she said, it's a small thing. I really want to focus on something bigger while you're here. But we did it. We took 10 to 20 minutes. It actually only took about 10 minutes and then we fixed it. And then later that night she had texted me and she said, oh, my kitchen's so clean and it was so easy. I just had to fix that drawer. And then we were talking about the importance of small things actually that whole day because that home, it's like this really beautiful home and there's just so many small things in that home that neither occupant really wants those things. They kept them out of like necessity or guilt. So between actually their kitchen and their living room, most of what we let go of was small. Things that they weren't gonna miss, things that they didn't even want. But by the time I left, we had eight big hefty bags and the feeling in that living room and that kitchen were completely different. And it's also gonna be much easier for them to keep on top of it and keep it clean now because there's that much less stuff but almost everything that was going out was small and it just really added up. There was a different client that I had recently and that client had a small kitchen and we were going through the main cabinet where the dishes were and things were off to the edge and then they were very tightly packed in there. And it's a cabinet that she uses multiple times a day. And she was saying, it's just so full, but I don't actually have that much and I don't have that much storage space. And so we went through the cabinet we ended up just removing two mugs that she didn't want anymore and she still had plenty left. But all of a sudden, those two mugs, now she had that much space for not everything to be to the edge of the cabinet and then now she can move things around. But it's funny because just by removing two small things, you can free up a lot of space. There was another client who had a really nice home office and she shared it with her husband and she said the office was felt cluttered, but she didn't know why and she wanted my help to declutter it. So we kept going through the small things and she got really annoyed because she said, you know, our time together is valuable. Can we go through the bigger things? 
but in her office, I don't think there were that many bigger things. I think the culprit was this accumulation of small things. So I just asked her, could you just trust me? And then we'll go through everything in this office and you'll see what I mean at the end. And as we didn't see much of a difference. We're working this whole time. We don't see much of a difference until all of a sudden there's this massive difference and it just clicks. It just seems so sudden. But when she saw it, she was like, this is amazing. And when we finished up her office, felt and looked gorgeous and it just felt like a productive creative space but the accumulation of small things that she didn't even need or she didn't want that were taking up space that seemed so inconsequential and small really added up to make a big difference another thing is that small things can have a heavy energy in this aspect one of my clients had a vase that was given to her and it was just a small vase it was a small ceramic vase I don't know what it was, but it had just such a heavy energy about it. I thought maybe it was my imagination, but just something felt off. Anyway, she liked the look of it, but she ended up getting rid of it because she felt the same way. And then come to find out the person that had given it to her, it was a secondhand gift, was a woman who had gone through postpartum depression. And while she was at her worst during the postpartum depression, she was in this room and she said there wasn't much but the vase was one of the items in the room. And at one point she decided to clear everything out from that room because it just had such a heavy feeling and just bad memories associated with that time. And so she gave a lot of things away. One happened to be the vase that my client got. And so that was kind of interesting. I think secondhand things can carry energy from predecessors. And so that's why whenever you buy things from a secondhand shop if you don't know who they're from or if you get a weird feeling about it, it's good to sage it or cleanse it in the sun because you don't know what predecessor energy that item's holding on to. There was another client I had where in her medicine cabinet, she had a 10 year old whitening toothpaste and her medicine cabinet was nicely organized and we were just popping in to search for expired toiletries and she was telling me this toothpaste, this whitening toothpaste is about 10 years old and she said she kept it because she had a whitening kit with like a some kind of toothbrush and it has a light that goes on to whiten your teeth and you need this specific toothpaste to go with this toothbrush. And so she said she had kept it all these years because she knew she wouldn't use it, but when she was ready to use this kit again with this whitening toothbrush, she would need to buy this toothpaste again. And she said for literally years, she thought, I need to just write this down and stick it on a post-it and put it with the toothbrush. But in her nicely organized medicine cabinet, there was just the old big whitening toothpaste. And she said every time that she opened her cabinet, which medicine cabinet, which is like multiple times per day, right? Because we use the bathroom in the morning and then in the nighttime and that's at a minimum. And so she said every time that she would open it, she would see that toothpaste and then think, ah, oh, I have to write that on a post-it. So it seems really small and inconsequential, but it's actually such a drain, isn't it? Because if she goes and she's thinking about something in the morning when she goes to open her medicine cabinet or at night, every time that she sees it, which is each time that thought's gonna loop through her mind for a moment and interrupt whatever she's thinking, it's not like the most conducive thought you could have. So while I was there, it literally took her less than a minute and she wrote the toothpaste down and then put it into her kit with her toothbrush and then we threw away the toothpaste. But imagine 10 years of opening your medicine cabinet and then just seeing it there multiple times. I wonder how many times the thought looped through her head of, I just have to write this on a post-it. So it seems so little, but it makes a difference. Another example I can think of is a, probably a pretty typical example, but recently I went to go help uh, somebody declutter their closet and she had a bunch of clothes that she hadn't worn for a while that she wouldn't. So we decluttered a bunch of t-shirts and jeans. I don't know if that would really count as small things, but I guess we didn't remove anything huge from her closet. And by the time we had finished, her closet was so airy and it was just filled with all the things that she loved and that made her feel great and that were really comfortable and that she would actually use. Well, for the most part, we kept a couple of dresses, the special event dresses, but the point was we cleared out a lot of little things from her closet and what a difference in the end. So it's really the small things that add up. And even when writing a book, currently I'm writing this book on decluttering. 
a really good tip was given to me a long time ago about writing and then it's kind of the kaizen method where you just accomplish a little bit a day but they say write an hour a day the consistency of an hour a day really adds up so if you write an hour a day eventually before you know it you have a book and the thing about writing an hour a day for me at least i get really into it and then it rarely is an hour a day there's some days that i end at an hour mark and then i set my timer and i feel accomplished but there's some days that i keep going two three four five hours because i'm on a roll and i think it's that just sitting down to do it even if it's small bits at a time like an hour a day it adds up small amounts add up you write for an hour a day for however long and then all of a sudden you have a book they also say when you're trying to save money to do small things like make your own coffee as opposed to buying it at a coffee shop but if you do go to a coffee shop often then it could be argued that that's a pleasure and you're spending your money how you want to and that's what life's about so that's okay if you enjoy going to a coffee shop that's just an example but if you buy a coffee a day that's five dollars a day and then if you start making your own coffee you're saving five dollars a day as opposed to spending it so five dollars a day doesn't seem like much but if you look over the course of a month five dollars multiplied by say 31 days that's 155 dollars and over the course of a year that adds up to 1825 dollars so big things are big things and of course important but my point is that small things should not be ignored which we have a tendency to do because they seem so small and not that important but little things add up so quickly and i'm going to just share with you some great quotes from wise people that basically sum up this point the first is pennies make pounds by old mr lowndes beware of small expenses a small leak will sink a great ship by benjamin franklin watch the pennies and the dollars will take care of themselves also benjamin franklin great things are done by a series of small things brought together vincent van gogh dripping water hollows out stone ovid and those are just such great quotes such good points and when we're talking about small things in life it's the small moments too to appreciate because the small things can make us feel great and alive i've been plugging away for the last few months at work and last night I decided to take a break and just go for an hour to go surf and it was around the sunset and the water was warm and just seeing the sun come through the clouds it was kind of overcast and there was just the neon sunset and the dark gray water and all the camaraderie of like the people around you the other surfers in the water but it was just silent and you just hear the water lapping and there was just like in that moment I was so happy to take the hour to have come down and it just seems just such a little moment just such a simple thing but I felt so much gratitude and for you it doesn't have to be a surf it could be anything that brings you happiness and joy and comfort and a pleasure it could be a hot cup of tea with a loved one a good tv show or a good book a warm breeze in the morning the rain on the window pane the fresh air after the rain, a smile from a stranger, a wave from a neighbor. There's this quote by Sanchita Pandi in the book Being in Peace, and she says, while you focus all your attention on achieving big dreams, your little acts every day are completed in a hurry, in anger and criticism, with your mind chattering constantly in disharmony. However, it is your small deeds done in the right way that make you great. I digressed in a way, and I talked about life, even though this video is about clearing small clutter but i think in a way it's the same concept we should focus on big things of course and prioritize what's the most important but it's important not to ignore the little things because they add up there's also another quote and it's penny wise and pound foolish that's the opposite right that's where you pay attention to the small things and ignore the big things so my advice to you in this video is to do this Pay attention to the big things and prioritize them. They are important, but don't ignore the little things. The little things tend to get ignored, but they are important too. When you declutter, remember to declutter the little things. It's one of the things that I see the most in cluttered homes where clients say, oh, that's little, so we don't really have to do that right now. But then we go after the little things as well as the big things, and then it just makes such a huge difference. 
Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button as it helps more people find my channel and I really appreciate it. If you'd like to see more content like this, please hit the subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.